Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Abbey. I show parents and children suffering from various disorders what to do so they don't have to suffer anymore. Today, I'm going to share with you ways in which you can use EEG with the NeuroGuide program to image your client's brains and to share with them this imaging to aid in diagnosis and also to use this information as a form of treatment through neurofeedback or EEG biofeedback. So first I wanna share with you this EEG. This is based on the 1020 system. And what we see here are frequencies from zero to 30 Hertz and amplitudes uh, expressed in microvolts. Uh, at the lower box down here, what we see, uh, again, zero through 30 Hertz, and this is comparing to a normative database uh, with a mean of zero in standard deviation of one. This normative database uh, was derived from a research study uh, in the 1990s and moving forward with Robert Thatcher and other researchers during the decade of the brain when $2 billion dollars uh, was spent in brain mapping. So what they did is they did neuropsychological assessments on children through adults, and they did brain maps. So we have a database against which to compare that brain activity, the EEG brain activity, uh, compared to what we know should be normal based on their neuropsychological testing. So that's what we see here. And so uh, when we're looking at this imaging, uh, what we're seeing uh, in this young person who actually has ADHD and anxiety is an excessive amount of slow activity. Um, and we're going to see where this is in a minute because we're going to use models and superimpose this electrical activity there. And then this is uh, an excessive amount of fast activity. We'll see where that is and how we can use this information to help this young person overcome these difficulties. Through the EEG, we can use that imaging and superimpose this electrical activity onto this model of the brain to understand the location of this dysregulated activity. And in this uh, young person's case, this is a 14-year-old with um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, <laughs> predominantly inattentive type. He struggles uh, with doing well at school, uh, persistent underachievement, procrastination, uh, difficulties with planning and organization. And as a result of having this lifelong condition, he's developed quite uh, anxious symptoms and he's suffering from this condition. And so what we see is, um, let me turn on this electrical activity here. What we see is an excessive amount of slow activity. Uh, now we can set, what's amazing about this program is we can set the thresholds to um, whatever we want. And in this case, we have it right around 1.7 standard deviations to see where that dysregulation is. And generally we train anything around 1.8 standard deviations and beyond that for uh, neurofeedback. And so what we can see in this young person is an excessive amount of slow activity, uh, mainly in this uh, excessive slow range, uh, especially in this theta range. Um, and you can see the precise uh, level of dysregulation. This is about three standard deviations uh, uh, deviant from normative uh, average. What we also see in this uh, individual is an excessive amount of fast activity. And this is generally where we're gonna see this anxiety expressed in this uh, person. Now, in further analysis, what we can do is make this brain transparent and we can actually look at the connectivity uh, in the brain, which when we do brain training, uh, after we help the person, uh, overcome their power and really simultaneously we're helping them with these connectivity measures which includes coherence and phase. Generally most people overcome their power dysregulation first followed by coherence and phase. Some people do it simultaneously uh, and so we can actually image this 
And uh, more importantly, we can do that from a network perspective. So if I want to see, for example, the attention, the dorsal attention network. So this is the four to eight hertz band and so we're looking at this uh, dorsal attention network. It's essentially, the different locations of the EEG for this young person are essentially doing a very similar activity. So they're uh, hypercoherent. And what we wanna see is more differentiation. We can also see the uh, emotional attention network in this uh, person. So we can see all these things are very dysregulated uh, from a coherent standpoint. Now we can also go through this as well and understand the phase differences. So in order to understand the phase difference, what we're really talking about is how, what is the phase lag between these different hubs and the blue indicating that the brain is moving just too quickly. Uh, the yellows and reds uh, excessively slowly. And so we can adjust this to be wherever you want it to be. Um, and so I can uh, make this more stringent and make this uh, at uh, two standard deviations so I can just kind of view those things. Uh, I can look at the ventral and emotional attention network um, or I can uh, uh, look at other forms as well. Now, uh, the other thing that's very interesting in this young person is his anxiety. And so I'm going to move up to where we saw that. And actually, for the connectivity, we see more of this dysregulation uh, in the anxiety network uh, right between uh, 9 and 10 hertz. So we see this excessive amount of hyperconnectivity, and generally in anxiety, that's what you tend to see is excessive hyperconnectivity. This person is moving excessively quickly and sometimes holding on to these thoughts longer than normal. So maybe there's a degree of rumination as well uh, in this person. And so what we would do then is develop a protocol uh, based on this person's dysregulation. If we review you know, this um, uh, excessive slow activity that we were viewing, the excessive fast activity, uh, we would include in the protocol the coherence and phase. Now, we can image just shy of 24,000 metrics and very precisely include those in the protocol. In general, we will train between 200 and 300 metrics. What we can do with this information is provide this in a protocol and feed this information back to the individual so they can use this as a brain computer interface or really for the first time they have an instantaneous real-time feedback as though they have a mirror to their brain they can actually see their brain for the first time and see how it's uh, behaving and respond to that behavior and so what we do is we have a reward system we're sampling the brain activity at 128 times a second we're comparing that activity to a normative database. This is called uh, Z-score training, or in this case, we use SW Loretta Z-score, where we can image up to those uh, just over 23,000 metrics. We're generally following about three, two to 300 metrics at a time, uh, and we're making those comparisons. And so on average, if this person is uh, increasing or improving that brain activity toward normative average, and they can hold that trend for at least a quarter second, then we provide an instantaneous reward. And so that reward can be a video game that uh, they're uh, activating with this better brain activity, or they're looking at a movie like a YouTube movie or uh, a regular movie that's dimmed out about 50%. And each time they do this improved brain activity, they will brighten up the screen. So over time, uh, through neuroplasticity, they actually get better uh, through the course of 10 sessions or so of about 20 to 25 minutes in length. People start to see a noticeable difference that begins to translate into the classroom 
at home. And over time, depending on a couple of things, the severity when they start the training and their learning curve, uh, these changes are permanent and they actually can maintain these changes. Now, what we do is we follow these clients over time. And so we provide annual brain checkups. And so we can actually team up with the parents or you know the individuals if they're adults but it's particularly important for children so we can foster that development over time and so if their brain activity begins to stagnate uh, for whatever reason they develop this condition in this case adhd was which is a developmental disorder uh, arguably their brain uh, maturation is behind in the attention and the executive function networks by 20 to 30 percent this is one of the most powerful ways to improve that brain activity, to grow those brain areas, to help them use their own resources to overcome these difficulties, and it's permanent. Uh, but you know, one of the things that we don't know is how did this happen in the first place? How did this young person uh, stagnate uh, their uh, their development in their brain. And so we want to monitor that over time. So as a neuropsychologist, we do that through testing, we do that through brain imaging, and we provide updates in their training over time so we can help them keep pace with the development of their own abilities and their peers so they can realize their potential over time. Uh, at SBMT, I'll be taking more questions if you have any questions about this imaging or uh, about the experience of neurofeedback in general and how to actually implement this in your practice or uh, team up with others.